category or maybe a new game you've been routing out. It's a, Maybe it's a finished task or segmented run. Uh, randomizers, bingos, you name it, I want it. You can submit to the show using the exclamation point passion command in the chat and follow the link to my submission form. Am I muted? I'm not muted. There we go. Hi, everyone. Um, so before we get started with the run that we have planned for tonight, uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, first and foremost, SGDQ 2023 is coming up on May 28th to June 4th in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you're interested in attending the event, registration is now open until May 7th. That is very, very near. Uh, so if you want to register, go to gamesdonequick.com and you'll get the information there for that. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. And also go to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, so tonight here on Passion Project, I am joined by the, the fantastic Battle Network community as we showcase something very, very special. Now, one of the things I talked about uh, a few times here on, D on the GDQ Hotfix is the multi-world randomizer system called archipelago.gg. Uh, it's a cross-game modification system which randomizes different games and then uses the result to build a single unified multiplayer game. Items from one game may be present in another and you'll need your fellow players to find items that you need in their games to help you complete your own. Uh, it'll make a little more sense when, once we get to it, but many games have been added to the system so far, such as Sonic Adventure 2, Stardew Valley, uh, several Zelda games, um, Factorio, you name it, it's probably there. Um, but there's many more that are actively in development. Now, one of those such games that are in development right now is Mega Man Battle Network 3. And I've got Kilios, Karna, and X Kirby here to give you all a sneak peek at what a multi world for Battle Network 3 looks like. So thank you all for being here with, with me tonight and being willing to show this off. How are you all doing tonight? Let's start with you, Karna. Yeah, thank you, Amber. I'm doing very well tonight. I'm Karna XT. I'll be one of your players tonight for the multi world random, also known as Arpelico. And I'll be joining here tonight with my friends Kilios and X Kirby. Go ahead, guys. I am X Kirby. And I, excuse me, um, I just had some water. Uh, I am one of the uh, helpers for this particular archipelago AP world. I supplied some of the notes to the original developer to help him along his way and make what you're going to see here today. Go ahead, Kilios. Uh, hey, my name is Exkilius. I'm a Battle Network speedrunner and Star Force speedrunner. Uh, I've been speedrunning for about 10 years now, I'd say. That's about now. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing you some more stuff for the BN3 multi world that we had working on. Uh, so, with that in mind, I think we are probably good to go. So we can start with a countdown. Everybody's ready? Yep. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I am cool. ready for this. Yeah, it'll be really exciting. I'm hoping everyone uh, enjoys what they see. So we'll start from five and we'll go on go. Yep. Sounds good. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Go. So just to make sure everything's working, we're just going to jack in probably immediately to check one of our uh, blue mystery datas online and see if we can start sending checks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, everything to Karna. Sounds great. Oh, about, of course, I'll be your main protagonist tonight, thing. folks. <laughs> As usual. Oh, that's so I've one. actually never played Battle Network 3. Um, I've only played 1, 6, and like the first third of 2 so far. Um, and I know that the Battle Network Legacy Collection was recent really, uh, recently released. So if you've never played the Battle Network series, check that out. And it's actually how I'm currently working through this. Um, so I know that like there's not a ton of changes between like two and three, uh, but what are some of the changes for someone who's maybe only played the first couple of games? Um, I have not played two. Have either you played two? Yeah. So yes. one okay. thing that returns from two, um, not to show it off, is the feature of the style change system. Uh, essentially, 
The open world randomizer that we're using is that the multi role is based on allows us to start the game on a new game and then immediately get access to a style. So I have access to Heat Shadow style, which uh, I'm sure the others will tell you what they have as well. Well, that's one of the fire. key changes. Heat Shadow was exclusively made for blue, while uh, in Mega Man Battle Network 3 White, we have ground style. Ugh, heat bug. Not exactly a big fan. <laughs> Elect Shield. Might as well switch to it. Uh, Additionally, I believe the Navicust was not in Meg Mega Man Battle Network 2. Yes, Navicus is a new feature that was added exclusively, for, or not exclusively, but started off with uh, in BM3. Oh, I remember the Navicus system from 6. 6 was actually my first uh, introduction, not only to Mega Man Battle Network, but Mega Man as a whole. Uh, that was way back when I was in high school, um, back in like 2007, 2008. Uh, so I started at the very end of the series, and then when I went back to 1, um, last year for the first time it was just such a uh, whiplash effect of like where's my navi cust where are yeah. my styles <laughs> why can't i run from things without the escape chip yeah right. with the addition of the navi cust though it actually allowed us to get a new style that we weren't able to attain before in vn2 which is the bug style which is obtained by using or bugging your navi cust itself to allow us to attain a very particular style that works off of bugs. A lot of the time there are a bunch of positive bugs, but you'll always start with one negative bug every battle. Uh, most of the time it's not so bad, but I think Kilios has more experience with all the bad memories for it during the speedruns. <laughs> Honestly, I think bug style is pretty funny. But I, I live for the chaos. To show you some cool stuff. Hopefully, hopefully no movement bug. That's probably the worst one. <laughs> I just realized my style is not good for farming bug frags. That's a great thing to mention too. Is uh, so in Battle Network Two, there were ways to get bug frags. They were from blue mystery data that were on the map, scattered throughout the entire areas. Uh, in BN Three. Uh, you are able to obtain bug frags uh, just by counter hitting enemies. And this is important for this uh, multi world because we need 31 bug frags to be able to buy out a shop that will hopefully get us some good checks. It's technically 32, actually. Okay, it's 32. <laughs> <laughs> Extra two won't matter too much. That's true. Did you spend mm. your 10k semi at Karna on the number trader? Oh, I haven't. Oh, you're about, you guys are about to get your inventories exploded. <laughs> now that you reminded me about that. <laughs> oh, I'm still checking around thing. school. You know, I had, I had to go to school real quick. You know. Yeah, the number trader True. was added, I believe, in BN3 as well, where you're able to input uh, a sequence of eight different numbers together to then get yourself. Uh, some various goodies that were advertised also in the anime or advertised in game from like uh, just random like hidden codes, hidden areas. Buying chocolate. <laughs> yeah, buying chocolate. All, all kinds of things to just give you sort of an advantage, but all of them are also just uh, you can only get them exclusively from the number trader. Ooh. I Ooh, mentioned that, needle. but uh, in, in the multi-worlds, we actually uh, use the number trader, but uh, we don't input any codes. Instead, we feed number man Zenny, and he gives us uh, checks. He's I mean, let's be honest, money. I wouldn't I want to be entering it. a code. So for anyone who is uh, joining us or maybe they're um, they're shuffling off to bed right now or something, uh, what exactly are the different uh, uh, set not the settings, but like what items are randomized and can result in finding items for other people? Like it's looking like mystery data is randomized and so is the uh, number trader. Because I'm seeing uh, some items going to Kilios from uh, Karna, for example. 
Basically, anything that's on the overworld is effectively randomized, except, I think... I gotta remember. Uh, anything in shops is not randomized. So, anything that counts as something you can pick up is randomized, but shops are not. This includes things from trades as well. Oh, interesting. Keep forgetting about the trades sometimes. We are still required to get the requisite ship to do the trade. Uh, so that's why we should always talk to the trade NPCs, make sure that we have uh, not something of our fellow runners stuff that might help them progress. <laughs> yeah. The, the trade NPCs also tell you exactly what they give you now. And that means if they have something from another world, it'll tell you what world it's for. So, I know we've been doing this so far on stream, and uh, usually a great thing to start talking about is what is the goal of this multi-world? Oh yeah, that's so, important. <laughs> essentially, what we're looking for right now is undernet ranking progression. Uh, the undernet is basically like the evil area of these games, and we need to get uh, through the internet ranking progressions from rank 10 to rank 1, and then acquire an item called the Gigafreaks. This will give us access to the final areas of the game, where we'll then be able to go through... Uh, well, we just go through the entire final areas of the game for like one final like push to uh, get to the end. So, the end goal is to get to Alpha and beat Alpha. Right now, the state of the game is actually in its final area dungeon form. So a lot of stuff is actually Basically, available yeah. to you right away. Um, so the way that we can eliminate this by not letting everyone go everyone everywhere right away usually is by giving them certain key items that we normally get throughout the story as a check. So to be able to get the side lab, we would need a PET. A, a sub PET key item to even have access to even go to the lab itself. And in order to get the like Yoka, you need the uh, needle. Correct. <laughs> I do want to finish all my checks in ACDC before I head off over to Yoka. There is a yeah. lot. So the important things we're really looking for right now is getting access to our overworld areas. So like it was mentioned, the sub PET is needed to get to Scilab. Uh The needle is needed to get to Yoka, which would also allow us to start using or uh, start feeding our bug frags. And then the PET case is needed to get to beach area, which we need to get the PET case in order to even get to the final zone once we are met with our rank. I found 30,000 zenny. Oh, I love money. <laughs> <laughs> also, the internet passes for the Cyber Metro are randomized, so in order to actually go to various areas on the internet, the emails that would unlock the teleporters are locked behind the Cyber Passes. I don't know where I was going. Luckily, though, if we... If if one of the runners gets the Scilab pass, they actually have a lot more access than they think they do besides Scilab itself. Since the state of the game is actually in its final uh, dungeon state, there's also a state of where when one of the boss navvies had drilled through the firewall <laughs> to get to a certain story-related item that allows us to access the internet pretty early, which opens up a lot of a lot of uh, checks that we normally can't get to. Also, a reminder to save. As a good yes. reminder. <laughs> <laughs> it is fine if you do happen to game over in the game. Um, you will be set back a little bit, but not like the items that you've gotten for your teammates will be gone 
just more along lines that you'll lose most of your progress. <laughs> For the most part. But you'll still gain back the items that your teammates have given you. They'll be sitting in your inventory. Just a nice, nice little safety net in case something like that happens. Why oh, did I miss an item? I believe that's all of them. Yep, it is. Gonna save now. Just got a bunch of checks. <laughs> yeah, I saw all of those <laughs> just pop up on your screen. Uh, yeah, they only start to show up once we're uh, outside of menus. So it's just, uh, there, there was a lot of things happening with uh, number of man codes. Everyone, I just got them all at once. It was pretty nice. No, it's been a while since I've actually checked too. I should probably see if I got anything really good to put in the folder. Yeah. Nice actually. little plant, man. Really great ship. <laughs> Basically, just press A to win. I love ships Ch like that. <laughs> plant man is exactly mm -hmm. that. So just to um, answer the question in chat, uh, you don't actually miss out on receiving items because you're in a menu. What will happen is uh, the server that is running and keeping track of all the checks that are going to each game or coming from each game, it will hold on to that un that that like you know flag, if you will, until someone is out of the menu and able to actually receive their item. Uh, so there is uh, one of the players is uh, I think playing at a larger resolution so that their message isn't quite displaying as largely as uh, one of the other players, um, but. Either way, like, they won't be missing any checks. Like, the server will not allow that. <laughs> yeah, and just to show, I did, I did indeed get the uh, Gutsman V3. It just took a little bit of time since I was in the fight. Alright, typically items that we get from our teammates will actually go to the bottom of the folder instead of the top of the folder, which is usually where a lot of the chips will usually go. But that, uh... Never fret if you don't get your item. Typically, try to check the bottom of the folder. Uh, it likes to hide. <laughs> Someone else also mentioned, uh, like, wait, wasn't there an anime tied to the Battle Network series? Yes, that was the NT Warrior series. Um, they uh, Capcom streamed it on Twitch some time ago, and uh, the first two English dub seasons uh, are actually available on their YouTube channel until September. If you've never watched it, go watch it. It's a uh, neat little piece of history. Oh, I definitely watched it as a kid. It was really good. I yeah. don't know if it aged well, though. <laughs> yeah, I have no clue either. I just remember... Like, I, I knew about it through the anime, and then when I finally started playing the Battle Network games, I was like, wait a minute, because there's a translation difference between uh, for uh, Mail's name, where she's Meilu in the anime, but not in the game. Yeah. Because in Japanese, her name is Meru. Yeah. Someone saying NT Warrior was my favorite show growing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely one of my favorites, too. I definitely tuned in every Saturday morning if I could. Yeah, there were like two, oh. I think two seasons that never got dubbed either. Yeah, we only got access to NT Warrior and NT Warrior Access, but we never yeah. got um, Beast Green, and Beast or Stream. Beast Plus. Nice. So another cool thing that got added to this game is these little shortcuts. This is, I think, this is the first one they started doing the shortcuts, where. Uh, you talk to your friends, you read their email, and they give you access to different areas via their square. Uh, these shortcuts are actually locked out in the multi-world until you get access to the cyber passes. So I have access to the cyber Yoka pass, so now I can actually just go to Yoka area without having access to Yoka area uh, with in like the overworld. So I can only go to Yoka area from the net, but not from the overworld. I 
That's really interesting. <laughs> really interesting how it all kind of works out. Yep. I just don't question it because my brain's just, uh... uh it's too much to think about. <laughs> Ooh. I know another thing that changed from BN2 to BN3 is how running system works. We used to have the escape ship from the first two games, but... And then BN2 actually started incorporating the run feature as well, which was your escape rate was based off your power level, if I'm correct, or power-ups? Yes, based off your level. Right. And then once we got to BN3, the run rates actually changed to something more... Common is based off of your max HP value. Um, so long as your max HP value meets a certain threshold for certain areas, you'll always be able to do a either a one turn run, a two turn run, or three turn run. And then back to your standard, what do you see nowadays from your four to six bound network games? Is a seventy five percent chance of whether or not you will run from the battle. Is that actually quite like it a lot? Because being three incorporated such a unique way to run from battle. You can either guarantee yourself a good run or guarantee yourself knowing that you either get a two-turn run. It's actually really nice, actually. <laughs> so, I'm already rank one, which means I just need one more rank to get to the final zone. Oh, jeez. Uh, well, I don't have access to any of the overworld stuff, so I'm basically uh, not allowed to go there, even if I get the Giga Freeze. <laughs> Oh, I got Giga Priest. All right. Well, I just need to get my P. How case. did that even happen? Oh, jeez. Uh, I was probably the number man trader. Probably. I did feed number man like everything. Yeah. We're on a faster pace than we thought. Apparently. Oh. oh, more plant mans. Thank you. Thank you. I'll always take that. Perfect. Get anything good for my folder? <laughs> and I got shake, so I know I can guarantee, hopefully, the deletion of Alpha when I get there. Yeah, I need to get the uh, sub or the PET case. It's a key item that you receive. All going through the story in the game, and that will give me access to beach area. The cyber passes only allow me to get to uh, the access of the infinite versions, which I think I have all the ones I need. So I'm gonna go to Scilab right now. I think I just sent you another progressive undernet rank, which means you got 20 bug frags. Yeah, so once you have access to Giga Freeze, there are extra progressive ranks that are randomized into this, and they just give you 20 bug frags, which is really good because that just means I have to farm Ooh. 20 less bug frags for when I get access to uh, Yoka. I got mod tools. Too bad I don't remember any <sighs> of the you. codes. Uh, mod tools was introduced in this game as well with the feature of the Navicust. Mod Tools allows you to basically, uh, after you click OK and run your NaviCust, if you press Select, you are able to open an extra menu. It's kind of like a cheat menu or a hacking menu where you input a set of codes, and once you input that code, you are then able to get a bonus effect that has sometimes has side effects and sometimes it does not. I remember sometimes there were like key combinations you could do or button combinations you could do to like compress um, some of the Navicust programs in like Battle Network 6, like make them smaller so they would take up less space, uh, yeah. so on and so forth. Those are also in this game as well. And they're separate from the mod tools, mm -hmm. but it is uh, 
it is nice to have access to certain Navicus programs, which was a good thing that you mentioned, because now I'm going to look and see what I have. Uh, and I, <laughs> you know I've, gotten, to... I've gotten nothing. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep looking around online and get our checks. I got Black Mine and HP 100. Let's go. So the good HP thing about getting access to Scylab area is... Uh, a later part in the game, we get access, or we get like a hole in the net, and that hole allows us to gain access to the undernet, which allows me to practically just backtrack from the undernet to uh, all the other areas that I currently do not have unlocked. Uh, the only caveat is it's very dangerous to be traveling through the undernet, so. Yep. <laughs> yeah, especially with your HP value. Yeah. There'll always be a 75% chance of running instead of a guaranteed chance. I think it was... Oh, it was at least 540? No, 560 for a one-turn run. 540 was a two-turn run. Base HP. So there's a question uh, in chat, and we're going to get this question a lot, I feel. How does this multi-world randomizer work? Basically, um... Between these three games, uh, the items are for each person's games are scattered across, you know, other games. So what I mean, like, is the uh, PET case for Karna might be in X, X Kirby's game uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, just to give an example, and all of the overworld checks are um, are randomized. So all the like kind of like some of the mystery data, uh, the number trader ch uh, checks, all that sort of stuff. And basically, um, the way this works is through archipelago.gg, which is a website that you can go and, you know, randomize your games. You can do cross-game randomizing. It's great. But basically, uh, items from one game may be present in another, and you need your fellow players to find the items that you need in their game so that you can complete your own uh, playthrough of what you're doing. Uh, many games have been added to the system so far, many more actively in development, and this is one of the ones that are still actively uh, being developed, but it is in a currently working state to be able to show off uh, here on Passion Project as a sneak preview of what's to come. There we go. Only 10 bug facts. Ugh. Even though it's still in like a a playable form, I've been having a lot of fun with it uh, recently. I was introduced to it maybe about a couple weeks ago for testing purposes, and for the working state that it's in, is actually really fun for what it is. And the more people you have, well, obviously, it's going to be a lot more of an experience to have with everyone. <laughs> yep, especially when you start introducing other games to it. That'll be, that'll be a time. Oh, yeah. Um, for nice. example, I'm uh, like right before the show, I was playing through, uh, I was telling uh, uh, our wonderful guests here that I was playing through my own uh, seed right now where I'm playing with some friends and I have uh, Stardew Valley and Sonic Adventure 2 in on my end of the seed. So I have those two games to play. Uh, while we have uh, a couple of people running Link's Awakening DX, one person's doing Zelda 1, there's Overcooked 2, uh, Minecraft, and a bunch of those things are all mixed up. Even Pokemon Red and Blue, uh, those are all currently in our seed. We have like 2,200 total checks, and the nice thing with Archipelago is you don't have to do it all in one sitting like you're seeing here tonight. You can do it over multiple days. Uh, because 2,200 checks is unreasonable to do in one sitting. <laughs> Sounds about right. Should I believe it's possible. <laughs> yeah, the the best part is is that uh, Archipelago handles all of the data for all of the items coming in from games and being sent to other games. So if you pick up and put down a game, uh, you know, like let's say I have my game closed and then someone finds an item for me, like while I'm hosting the show, and then I come back to like Sonic Adventure Two or Stardew Valley, when I log into those games. I'll suddenly get a bunch of messages saying, hey, you've received, you know, a bajillion items, so to speak. Uh, and uh, that allows me to keep progressing uh, throughout all my checks. And all the randomizers are really unique. There are games like The Witness, uh, Zillion. Uh, this is going to be released eventually. Uh, 
There's just a lot of different options, so there's almost something for everyone, and they're currently working more towards uh, including, uh, like, being more inclusive across a bunch of different genres. It's super cool. Or else you're taking my bar sword, buddy. Oh, I need it, trust me. <laughs> Once I get access to my PET case, I'm running free. <laughs> Can't say I blame you. I hope so. Uh, let me... Uh, I think I gave you the Aqua plus 30 earlier, too, so you're set. Yeah, if I can get a shake. Well, I could buy a shake. That's fine. I think we gave you one I'm earlier. I'm going to go I think we, I gave one to Karna. Oh, is that what I saw? Yeah. Okay. How much health do you have? Uh, I have HP plus 100 on. I have 400 base. 420 now. Ooh. Oh, I can't use it. So uh, I feel I feel relatively safe going to. Uh, I think you'll be safe now. You I have mod tools. <laughs> right, well, I can sh I can show off a mod tools kit once this comes through. Can you actually give me one? Okay. By the way, that'll be funny. You need a code. The humor code specifically. Oh, SJ. Oh, yeah. I can give it to you when you have it. I, ha I have mod tools already. Oh, uh, we can save humor for for the end. That's I a, need it for a check. Treat. That's the thing. Oh, never mind. Okay, you know what? Here, okay, let me know when you need the code, <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you. I can actually go into Yoka and do the check, so I I'm, I I can type the code now. Uh, okay, so the code is, is SJ. Yep. H one. H one. Yep. U E. A A. I yeah, I don't remember this, unfortunately. I'm gonna I think it's been ingrained in my mind already at this point. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to save with that enabled. I won't hit L the entire time I have that equipped. I respect it. Thank you. Thank you for your service. I got to remember. So, ones do. Mod Tools, like I said earlier, is once I was able to run the NaviCust, I was able to uh, put in a code that allowed me to get a bonus effect. The bonus effect I chose was HP plus 1000. So I have a thousand more HP because of the code. And the side effects, once I get into another battle, I can show you is. I make poison panels. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun times, so. though. So while it does give me a thousand HP, if I'm uh, not careful, I could just end up losing and having to game over and start again from my fight. Oh, whoops. Well, I should have saved. Use those, uh... I thought I was still <laughs> shield style. Oof. I think I saved, though. Yeah, I saved right next to the uh, tree. A good, uh, yeah, a good thing with the swamp panels, though, you can actually use that to your advantage. Um, if you have, like, crack panels, uh, before they're completely broken, you can like step over them and they'll recreate the panels into swamps. So that way you're not actually cracking the panels all the way through and being area locked. It's actually pretty handy. Can't believe we made that it. mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, uh, definitely save. <laughs> I saved right before I picked up a BMD. So I just gotta go pick it up again. For consistency's sake. <laughs> oh, hey, Gaia Blade. Too bad I can't use it. Sadly, though, we don't actually... What was it? We don't actually see mod tools anymore throughout the future VN games. I think it's because they realize how powerful it really is. Yeah, mod tools is a very, very strong tool. It only costs 5,600 zennies in-game. <laughs> It's cheaper than most of the endgame battle chips. It's cheaper than most of the programs you can make it become. I need <laughs> Oops.
Wow, it still heals. That's pretty silly. Not that direction. Don't want to go to the secret area. There's nothing there. Oh, yeah, the jars. So, unfortunately, I don't have enough health to run through the internet, so I kind of have to fight these battles. But right now, it is faster for me to just fight battles than it is for me to run away. As long as I get a decent draw. That's true. Getting a decent draw actually determines a lot of stuff. Which reminds me, throughout most of the Battle Network games, we have a typical thing we call, was it Chip BIS or Chip Bias? Um, essentially, there are certain slots in the folder that are typically more seen or likely to get drawn. Uh, in this case, most of the time it's slots 1 to 5. So long as you put your best ships in those slots, you'll see a higher higher chance, usually, to draw those ships. Except for B and 3 when you reg something. In this term, is when you reg a chip. It basically means it's like your regular chip. You'll see it every time you pull it up on screen. Um, if you reg a chip in this game, the slots for bias usually changes from 1 to 5, and if I'm correct, it's 2 to 6 this time around. So ragging a chip basically just forces it to become the slot one in your folder. And that's uh, everything for slot bias is then shifted down. Really weird that it only happens in this game. <laughs> Making my way through the internet. Hoping yeah, I can get one the... of my uh, overworld checks. Yeah, I'm currently in the the AOL comp right now. What's the AOL comp? The zoo comp. True story. <laughs> <laughs> the images in the background just remind me of uh, the earlier times of Windows. I want to use Zeus Hammer, but my sabers. brain tells me not to. <laughs> It's only you 250 damage to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have undershirt. Never mind. <laughs> I, don't I don't have, have enough. It's, I don't have enough health to use it, which is unfortunate. I had Elect Shield. I replaced it with Elect Custom without realizing the consequences. Oof. Very unfortunate. You Okay, that's a good draw. Yeah, someone mentions it's not a race, it is a, a co-op. Yep, multi-worlds <laughs> are uh, very often co-op by design. Unless you do like, you know, a 2v2 two, two two multi-world sort of thing. Or maybe you run multiple games by yourself against another player also doing the same thing. <laughs> it's not a race, I've been... Dang, I've been trying to uh, take all of Kilios' items this whole time. <laughs> Ooh, press. That's actually really good. Oh, I don't spin white though. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, yeah, with the introduction to the Navi Cuts in this game, there are also story progression Navi Cuts parts which were just a way for the developers to kind of breathe life into, hey, you should use this new thing that we made. It's really cool. <laughs> oh, that's a good find. Too bad it wasn't mine. Please. Everyone's, I everyone has a sub PET would be. What is happening? I don't have one either. <laughs> All my real world checks are still off. 
Yeah, the press press is very much uh, a great thing to have. It is necessary because uh, majority of the time there are press paths which make your Mega Man uh, very small. Why am I saving here? You know, I, I think it only took me, I don't know, a good decade now to figure out that press just meant compressed. Because Mega Man gets compressed when he goes onto a compressed path. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh. So the sub PET normally doesn't lock anything, but uh, in order to allow for us not to have full access to all of our checks immediately, we are able to lock the overworld locations behind three key items that we always get no matter what, which is the sub PET, the needle, and the PET case. Right. I was talking with Kirby about this earlier. There was possible to have um, different position starting points for the archipelago, just to add a little bit of variety. You know, a lot of people start in different places, have different checks, so we're not always starting all at the same place, knowing what we might have at the same time. But it does offer <laughs> a lot more complexity when it comes to this sort of thing. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, it would be nice if we could figure it out. And by we, I mean the guy who's actually developing this, and I offer some help on the side. I, I think it's possible. I just don't know to what degree it would be. Wait, well, I should be reading these text boxes. Oh god, that was... What? I'm mashing too fast. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, that is not exactly necessary right now. <sighs> okay. When did you start this um, project, Kirby? Like, how long ago did this idea actually pop up into your head to kind of get this stuff rolling, but then eventually passing it off to someone else um, to let them... Somebody came to me with the, game. the idea, basically. Oh, interesting. I wanted to like make an open then. mode originally, but like I didn't know exactly what to do with it. Right. <laughs> is there any um, plans once this game is up and running and released into the wild, so to speak? Um, is there any plans to implement other Battle Network games? That I'm not too sure about. I only really know some of the details related to 3. Mm-hmm. So, for more details related to other Battle Network games, I would have to ask other people who know more about those games. Yeah, that makes sense. To be honest, we do have some people working on open world patches for the rest of the BN games. Ooh. Like uh, Rish. Rish is working on one for BN6. So, uh, with how it works in this game so far, uh, if we get the access to that open world on BN6, we can potentially start working on it for BN6 as well, if someone expresses interest in trying to start the project up. Right. That would be pretty sick if it uh, if it does happen, but even then, like, an open world patch alone is, like, really, really cool. Yeah, an open world patch opens up so many avenues for uh, just trying new things out with these games. Yep. By the way, also, Kilios, you have your PET case. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry also to for the interrupt. Question, oh, no, you're good. Uh, there's a question in chat asking, does this run end once one person finishes the game or when all three finish? So we have an estimate of three hours for the show right now. Uh, that is, we expect at least one person to finish within two hours. When one person finishes any items they did not pick up, any of the like checks that their game was still holding, releases out to the other two games. And then that would basically accelerate uh, the progress for the other two people who remain. And then we'll just keep going to see if we can get the other two finished um, until about three hours, uh, maybe a little more. Uh, but it should not take more than three hours to see at least one of the games, if not two of them, finish up. 
Yeah, in well, theory, I, I, I could. <laughs> yeah, in theory, I can go finish it right now if I wanted to. Or at least attempt to. Do you feel confident? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's your folder looking like right now? Uh, not that great, but <laughs> I feel confident. <laughs> Perfect. Also, Achilles, what is your Bubbler C trade? Because I do have your Bubbler C for my Shake 1S, but I mean, if it's not good, I'm not going to trade it away. <laughs> my Bubbler C trade or yours? Yours. Uh, let me go check. I already checked Psylab online, didn't I? He did. Uh, Kirby's Bold Man. So you don't need to. What rank okay. of Bold Man? Uh, I just said Bull Man. <laughs> so it's just the base, it looks like. More than likely, yeah. yeah. I think it'll be fine, Kirby. <laughs> you don't need Bull Man. If it was V3, I'd take it. Fair. Since I could technically start going to the end, I'm going to try and start doing some little folder building. And hopefully get some stuff along the way. I don't like this fight. Fine, I can we also know, show off a cool suit. trick. <laughs> True. Now my folder is looking great. It's got a got some soup, but it's working. It's working through it. I can, I can fix that. There we go. <laughs> There's nothing over here. That's right. I still haven't purchased the uh, bug frag items yet. I'm going to go do that. Yeah, I think I finally cleared out mine a while back. It only took however long it took. <laughs> I was just waiting for someone to get me more bug frags, but uh, I just sent them to you. Ah, that's fine. I mean, I don't need them now. Well, it'll be nice. Actually, that'll be nice because I can actually feed the one of the checks in the internet, which is a little spiky dog. He wants 50 bug frags just to allow me to get past him. <laughs> what do you need this for? Okay, time to Great go to charge. yoga. Let's see what we get. Okay. Okay. I got a refund. <laughs> Trading a bug frack for a bug frack. How nice. Free candy. Oh, nice. Ooh, that's a, that's a good one to add to this. I got Spreader Star. Progressive Internet Ring. That's a good one. Always love a good Spreader Star coated chip. Mod tools also, for Karna. Finally, thank you. You're welcome. Another progressive undernet rank for Kilios. I have so many bug frags. Might as well buy uh, something from the bug frag shop. You know, that's true. Undernet uh, I don't have enough, actually. Being useful. However, Drake, do I have plenty? That's perfect. Need two more HP memories. Let me go buy some cheap ones. Oh my god. I, I, I opened up my Navicus and I completely forgot the input of mod code tool. <laughs> I was like, oh, I got fast gauge and expand memory. I should probably put these in real quick. Completely huh. negated the idea of my original intent. <laughs> Got salamander. Grab that. Now I'll go check a few checks at beach since I can. 
maybe I'll get something good. And then, uh, after I do my checks, we'll, uh, brave the area of the final comps. I'm trying to remember where I'm going for a second. <laughs> I can do the shake glitch. <laughs> oh, nice. Be able to show that off. Hopefully. Got out of my folder, though. I'm I'm also laughing at the idea of Lan just sitting there eating a bajillion chocolate bars. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotta do it for friendship. This is important. Uh. Okay, oh, I can there. access beach. That's nice. Where did I get this? SJ, H1, UV. Got about this. Any fire chips? I do. So, one thing that was added to this game, which was mentioned earlier by Karna, is. We have some fixed programs that they wanted us to use throughout the game because a uh, cool new feature. Please try out our new feature with this new program. <laughs> and we need to burn some of these trees. I'm going to save here real quick just to show you. Uh, you burn one of your fire chips and then you light your Mega Man on fire and it burns, burns the tree to the ground. Don't, 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 no. Burn trees in real life. In this case, the, the scenario, the, uh, the the plants were uh, overtaking the hospital and uh, clearly disturbing the life force that was happening during that time. But uh, yes, those cyber trees were a real pain because you had to sacrifice actual fire chips that you collected over time. Yeah. Not a good feeling to lose your chips. I, I don't have the case. Let's go to side lab. One issue memory. I just need one more of those, and then I'll be safe to reverse. Oh, Giga Folder One. I could. Uh, I don't think I could make use of that because I don't think my <laughs> Navi cuss is that big. But <laughs> oh yeah, it's another thing to mention. Uh, our Navi cuss starts off really small, but we can get this thing called Expand Memory, where it just expands our grid by uh, one size bigger. I think it starts off as a 4x4 four four and grows into a 5x5 five five and a 6x6. Six six. Good feeling seeing the 6x6. Six six. <laughs> Typically, though, in the speedrun sense, we only ever see the 5x5, five five, which is more than enough to get things done. So close to the kicker freeze. I still need my PET case. I am at 520 HP. I just need 20 more and I can run the final comps. Ooh, Shadow J, I can do that trade. Because I'm in beach. <laughs> Hopefully it's something for me. I can definitely use something like that. Oh, maybe it is 4x5, then 5x5. Five five. I might have misset the. I probably shouldn't have boosted that. What'd you boost? I boosted Zeus Hammer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just to slay Metars. It was funny. Didn't want to deal with the Metars. Oh, there's my sub PET. Any of you get access to uh, order sys 
I don't think anyone I did. Did yeah, I did as well. Must be nice, <laughs> huh? I mean, I don't even think you would have enough money to buy anything left with you. Oh, I, I'm 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 rich. I have uh, dollars. Let's see. I have 18k. That's enough for one or two good chips. <laughs> Basically, one bar sword. I would have bought sensor three and needler. That's true. True. Yeah. No, you got a good point. I could actually buy a bar sword myself. I'm gonna hold off on that right now. Nope. Keep trying to remember all the quiz answers and it confuses me sometimes. I know the panda faces backwards at the zoo. <laughs> That one I'll always know. Okay, I know that answer now. Third time's yeah, a charm. I really wish I'd spin away. I got HP memory. Safe. Nice. I need to get this check. Another great thing about multi worlds is uh, it's really a big knowledge check as well, just to remember where everything is. Yep. Oh, I found my hub batch. Nice. God. <laughs> you gonna use it? I don't think so. <laughs> but <laughs> I used it once. It was, uh... it was a good idea. It was a progressive internet rank. I have so many. I could probably buy that Vars sword now if I wanted to. Okay, I got rid of the uh, the humor check. No, oh, nice. All for a, a nice Alexor P. I don't need an energy change either. Collect. I can't bug collect yet. I'm upset about this. Oh, God, really? All that for your recovery 50G? I think that was not worth it at all. I could potentially fit air shoes in here. Might actually be a better idea, but whatever. You know, Delta Ray? Yo! See if I can use it. Base plus, nice. Can I use that without a no, hole in I the think ground? You need, I think you need hole or dark man to summon one. Dang. Or dark I license. Yeah. I don't have either of those. Preferably dark license, because... Timing the hole, because you have to wait for the hole to open up, <laughs> and then use True. the chip is like, uh... Kind of gross. One yeah, more HP number. I didn't even know these guys were in here. I forgot about that. I got my needle. Nice. I'll go release the stuff from Yoka, and then I'll attempt the uh, final comps. Just because I want to go make Lanny eat 32 chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot something here. Just to check in on uh, the sta uh, status of everyone, just because everyone's in uh, three different places right now. What's the actual progress? I know Kilios has been able to technically go uh, be in what we call go mode in randomizers, uh, meaning uh, that at any point he can go 
try to finish the game. Uh, he has everything that he requires, uh, at least on paper, not counting uh, the status of his chip folder. But uh, I know Kilios is in gold, mo uh, gold mode. Go mode. Uh, how far along are Karna and Kirby? I need uh, rank two, rank one, and Giga Freeze, and then I'll be in go mode. I just need one more rank to get the ticket freeze, and I then I also need the PET case, and I'll be pretty much in go mode as well. So, my chip folder. I'm getting fine. confused. I with believe this guy. my folder. <laughs> All right, I have I have twenty more of these to eat. I'm sure one of these will be helpful. <laughs> that's, that's pretty helpful. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, I got my ticket freeze. That's really good. All I need now is just the PET case, and I'll be. Pretty much set to honestly just head to the final part of the game too. There we go. That was worthless. A side gun. <laughs> it's a just gave Kirby two of his ranks. That's uh, pretty helpful. <laughs> That's very helpful. Anyway, VS trade. Or I guess I'll still skill. talk to that person. Uh, no. I opted not to do the fire sword P trade. What was it? It was a block bomb one for you. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I don't need it. There you go, Kelios. Oh, nice. We're all sold out. Land is filled once again. I don't have so much <laughs> HP all of a sudden. How much HP did you guys chocolate give? That oh, uh, right. just ate. Yeah, I probably gave you a lot for my chocolate splurge. Yeah, I have 400 base HP now, and I forgot about an HP plus 500 in there. Okay, good to know. I still need one more. This is going to be funny if I have to be the one to find it. I still haven't gone oh. to the internet yet. My style changed. I totally forgot about this. Yeah, okay, he custom. Fun. I'll take it. I still have a lot custom. I honestly would have preferred a lot shield. Ironically, or well, unironically, technically. I think I think I caught your stream while you were doing that and you were having a bad time. Yeah, I remember that now, yeah. That was brutal. Alright, I think I feel good. I'm gonna go uh, start the end. Good luck. Yo, let's go. You Great time, too, movement. actually. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> I don't think I need to grab <laughs> any checks, realistically. <laughs> I was hoping that was for me. A tornado. Good shit. Yeah. We keep finding them for Kilios. What the heck? <laughs> Main protagonist energy. He always gets everything. Somehow. True.
I keep drawing Flash, man. Flashman's so good. Stuns, paralyzes, pierces invis. It pierces armor, too. Oh, wow. It, it like, counts as breaking. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, I totally forgot about this check over here. Hopefully I can just get my PTK soon, then I can also make my way over. Uh, I'm going into zoo comps right now. Hopefully that has everything you need. Hopefully. Uh, don't Ooh, a fun chip. How are we looking, Kilios? <laughs> How are we zooming? Oh, we're zooming? Are you already on Flashman? Yeah. Oh my god. He's insane. We're no longer zooming. New controller is uh, not agreeing with me. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah? <laughs> I thought you broke it in. No, not as much as I thought I did. I mean, it's still better than your A button sticking. Let's be honest. True. Real. I'm just gonna Zeus hammer a ratty. Deserve it. Well deserve. I'll take the 250. Oh, there's a good chip. Get in here. Uh, no, but there's like some other the, the cool comp 2 movement. You gave me a lot of good chips. Wow. Don't need that. I don't know I if this has some pretty good stuff. Here. Open up for that. I think it went too far. Uh, that was a stutter. Let's not do that then. <laughs> we'll go to normal. Life. <laughs> uh, get on for a set of suction cups. Yeah. Yeah. A rough one. Yeah, I have a consistent setup for it, but uh, it seems uh, the game did not like uh, whatever I was trying to do just now. I just had to send up a couple items to sabotage you in your movement. <laughs> oh, there's your order, sis. Oh, great. I should turn around. <laughs> A singular bug bag. Beautiful. There's another bar sword. Oh, baby. I gotta wait for that to come in. Oh. Uh, the retail version of the Legacy Collection does not come up. Would have been pretty sick if it did, though. Oh, okay. I agree. That's a good recovery I I chip. I have two more checks I can possibly do on my side of the mode <laughs> before I kind of reach the uh, the BK mode. Waiting on either one of you, but I will make sure. So for folks who don't know, uh, multi-world, what we call multi-world uh, terminology, uh, BK mode uh, is exactly what you think it is. If you think Burger King, uh, when you hear BK, that'd be right. Uh, there was a multi-world happening with Ocarina of Time, and uh, one of the runners 
was just kind of stuck without any checks that they could do because they were waiting on progress to happen in other people's games. So he's like, I'm hungry. I'm going to Burger King and literally just <laughs> went while stream was still live, went to Burger King, came back, ate food, was still like waiting for checks. <laughs> <laughs> so now we just oh. call it BK mode. A good feel in the beginning. Sometimes. Oh, I have Giga Freeze, but I'm still gonna grab these checks while I'm in here, I guess. Oh, well, I don't need that. I got my hammer. There's another. Per you know what? I, I could just finish the game right now. Would that be better? Uh, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I definitely. Uh... Yeah, I'll yeah. go with that. All my checks then. are pretty much good to go. I'm legitimately. <laughs> BK. <laughs> oh, dang. Uh, okay, I'll go do that then. Hopefully. And, uh, Double checking all my, my current checks to make sure. I don't have humor installed anymore. Unfortunately, I had to remove it to put HP plus 500. So, I'm gonna go to Order Sys and buy another Var Sword real quick. And maybe some other stuff. Yep. Bar sword B is ten thousand. Okay, they got one of those. At least in the meantime, I'll just uh destroy random viruses. <laughs> well I wait around. While we're uh while we're in BK mode uh, for Akarna, and then we're waiting for Kilios and uh, Kirby to make some more progress, I just want to remind everyone that if you're enjoying this, uh, your subs, your Prime Gaming subs, your gift subs, and your bits that are cheered here on the GDQ Twitch channel do help support Games Done Quick Hotfix. So please uh, consider subscribing if you're enjoying the daily speedrunning content. And uh, that this upcoming weekend, if you like uh, things that I host or things that I organize, uh, May 6th through the 7th, we're having Sonic and the Parallel Worlds, which is a weekend-long event featuring Sonic fan games, mods, and more starting at noon each day. If you want to find out more about that, use exclamation point Sonic in the Twitch chat and uh, take a look at that. I'm very excited. It's our annual Sonic event that I always put on. Uh, it'll be myself and Hypnotics hosting. And we've got an awesome lineup of uh, runs for that. So definitely come on the weekend and check it out. Yep, so and also to answer the question uh, again, what Archipelago is, it is a multi-world randomizer system. Uh, you can check it out at archipelago.gg. Uh, it's a cross-game modification system which randomizes different games and then uses that result to build a single unified multiplayer game. Uh, items from one game may be present in another, and you'll need your fellow players to find items that you need in their games to help you complete your own. So many games have been added to the system so far and many more actively in development, including Battle Network 3. So what you're seeing here is a sneak preview of what's to come in a future public release of the uh, multi-world system. And yes, the more literal answer in, is an archipelago is a land with a bunch of islands surrounding it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're okay. on the last comp. I should be kind of okay. I think I feel my folder is really good. I think I can finish. No fear. I probably don't need press installed, actually. I still don't have spin pink, do I? Oh, I do. Okay, well, uh, I don't remember the code to compress fast gauge, unfortunately. Uh, B down, A R, left R. Correct. Okay, so let me try this again. Don't forget the safety save, you haven't done it in a while. True, let me do that first. There we go. 
Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, final comps. Let's see. Or uh, basically, I'm gonna fight the final boss. A brief fight. I might need the uh, HP plus 1000 code as well once I get in here. Heading to the World 3 base now. But I'll see how far I get without the code. I know Bubble Man's gonna give me a hard time. You'll be fine. So to answer the uh, new question, uh, the three players that you're seeing, the three screens uh, that are playing, they're all playing their own individual instance of Battle Network 3. Uh, but, so for example, uh, Kilios is actually moments away from being able to finish uh, his seed. And when he finishes this final boss fight, uh, he'll have completed the goal of the game for him. And all of the items he didn't pick up in his world releases to Karna and Kirby. So they're about, they're about to get a bunch of items all at once. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, that being said, I'm not playing any of the games right now, uh, but I do like to partake in the occasional multi-world. Usually I play, like, Sonic Adventure 2 and then something else. Yeah, don't look at my screen. I'm just, uh... I've, I've checked all my available checks for items. I'm just kind of waiting on <laughs> the other guys real quick. <laughs> so this can happen to you as well. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I can just do this. That's fine. Did <laughs> you mess up shape? <laughs> no. I was just, uh, I've already sorted to got Eden. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my, uh, fight. We're done. All that's my a lot. are now being released. Yep. <laughs> Oh my oh goodness. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Let's see if I got any of that. I did not yet, but that was a lot of items. That was so many items. <laughs> that was a, Look at all that. That was a lot. And not a PET case from you. <laughs> so it must be in my world then. Is that your world or you must have my past that allows me to check? Some other stuff. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it might be in your world, definitely. There's really nothing else I can check here. I wanna try installing Hub Batch for a joke, but uh I I've, I've legitimately beaten the boss with Hub Batch before. Hey, go for it. I don't have enough HP for it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be funny, though. There's a cool glitch we can show off for against the final boss. So uh, after these credits, I'll uh, show it off. Oh, yeah, because I think I don't know if this is every battle network, but every battle network I've played to the end uh, doesn't let you save after you've beaten the game in terms of like you can't fight the final boss again. So the yeah. world ends up just kind of stuck in perpetual panic music, too. Yeah, it is very unfortunate. In 6, uh, they did manage to... Or there was an interview that said... Uh, they asked the question of, Oh, hey, so after we beat the game, being 6 is kind of stuck in a permanent like a panic music distress state. 
they were like, we'll fix it. And with the Never. release of the collection, they did. Oh, they did? We, we, oh, we no longer God. have infinite panic music after because that, the game. Because that panic music is awful in BN6. I actually hate it so much. Uh -huh. Like, the most of the music in that game is a banger, except for that track. <laughs> I got caught. I forgot where the thing was. Nah, you're fine. They did not fix the infinite panic in Battle Network 1, though. I will say that. Oof. Mm. Oof. Oh, infinite panic did not get fixed in the other games, unfortunately. At least in BN4, you could just start another playthrough. You don't have to listen to it if you just keep playing the game. <laughs> That's true. I think I'm forced to take these encounters with 400 HP. Yes, you need 540 to run from them one turn. Yeah, I don't have that much. I have 960 now, so that means I'm at 460. Okay, we're fighting Bubble Man now. Wish me luck. Uh, wait, oh, I forgot. Uh, I, think I, I think I have enough to reg invis. Yeah, I do, I have 41 reg mem. It's kind of insane, actually. Oh, I can do funny things. GG. Everyone get your GGs out, by the way, for Kilios. Darn it. Oopsies. Whatever. Oh, GG, Kilios. Good job. GGs. This main, main protagonist thing. Sorry. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Ooh, we can actually do this. Yeah, it is not Let's time see. yet because we do still have two other people trying to finish up their. Uh oh, um... no, there it goes again. <laughs> we do have two uh, folks trying to finish up their uh, their seeds as well. Uh, the estimate is three hours just because we knew one person could finish in at least two hours and then uh, we give another hour or so to uh, the other screens just to see if they can wrap up as well since one person finishing releases a bajillion items that they didn't pick up to the other games which helps accelerate some progress in the other games still going. Let's see if I can find the stuff for this trick. Okay, I got him. Plant Man saved nice. the day there. What a good guy. Yeah, let's see what's next. Oh, darn it. Should have saved. And uh, yeah, that was that was it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what what happened there is basically we have this chip called Shake. Uh, Shake naturally does ninety damage, but when Shake is in a throne state, uh, it is not fully registered yet, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I used another chip. It was an attack plus or an aqua plus thirty. Uh, that chip is registered in the game files as has no damage. But 
it does have a damage value associated with it. Uh, those those chips and some other chips, uh, the damage value association is ten thousand. So oh my God. before before Shake becomes an actual projectile that appears on the map, if you get hit uh, while in the middle of the animation and then spam uh, to activate the chip. Uh, it overrides the damage that Shake would do before it lands, so Shake gets changed from 90 damage to 10,000 damage. Which is Which utterly is... absurd. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that got patched in the Legacy Collection. Uh, I did not. I did it not too long ago. <laughs> I meant in PvP. <laughs> and no, they didn't patch that in PvP. The only thing I got patched PvP-wise was... BN2's Tree Bomb Prison Glitch. Oh god. People can just in PvP, PvP then. Not in PvE. You can still do that in the PvE version. Okay, so BN3 PvP is just broken then. Uh, I mean, I think it's always been broken in other ways, not just of that. <laughs> yeah. The thing, the thing about Shake Glitch that makes it a little tough is... Your animation lock is naturally so high enough that uh, the shake will spawn onto the map before you have a chance to do anything else. But when you throw out the shake, and if you are able to get hit and it stuns you out of the animation lock, the animation lock of getting hit is shorter than the animation lock of you actually throwing the shake, which then lets you use the uh, other chip you have to execute that glitch. And you can also use it with other chips as well. Like Invis, one of the chips I had that just turns you invulnerable and like uh, they can't hit you. Uh, that has a damage value of zero. So I can change my shape to have a damage value of zero. And it would hit him and then it would just do nothing because no damage <laughs> is going through. Uh, with the main game done, though, uh, I do have access to something called the hammer, which would allow me to get through more of the secret area, which is the post-game comp of this mm -hmm. game. So while we're having the other two go through, I'm going to try and get through some of the post-game fights. Yeah, if that'd be fun. I'm allowed to. I don't know if I have the right checks or not. We'll find out uh, whenever I get back then. I can do literally almost uh, everything. Get <laughs> it too early. Dang it! I'll save our uh, our little humor thing till the very end. Finish. Oh yeah, let me do. I'll join you in on that as well. <laughs> Actually, let me start running there. Oh, there they are. Okay, cool. <laughs> so now, now I can save, and uh, those probably won't pop up again. More than likely. It's like there they go. Dang it! I busted when I didn't mean to. Oh. Held B for too long. Okay, let's try this again.
are you two looking on uh, progression so far? Where are you at, Kirby? I'm on the Desert Man fight. Oh, you know where I'm at, Kilios. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm at. Actually, I forgot I like, to grab something. I have a grand old time. Actually, no, I think I could... Uh... Dang it. I had a long sword instead of hero sword. Here we go. Problem solved. <laughs> Ooh. Let's go. To go buy this one. To check if I have if access to. Yep, there. Oh, another cool thing I could show off actually while we're here is uh, one of the features I got added in this game as well. That's really nice. It's called uh, the virus breeder. <laughs> Darn. Mm. That's right. I'm not sure if I. Let me see. I think the spawns are still here. Are you looking for your child? Oh, I need to go talk to the guy, I think. And I can go look for them, yeah. buy anti-damage so I can have bodyguard in my folder. Very useful. I got a question for the chat while we're here too. Uh, what's your favorite Battle Network game? Have you played the series? Or are you planning to play the series with the release of the Legacy Collection? Uh, are you just vibing here otherwise? I just want to know <laughs> what folks enjoyed from the Battle Network series or if you're, uh, if you're looking to uh, get into it. Because my personal favorite, and I haven't played the entire series, but I really, really like Six, uh, Gregor specifically. Gregor hype. No bird connoisseurs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of threes, I'm seeing a lot of sixes. One person really liked Battle Network 2. Dang it. Got a little too close to that one. 3 is my personal favorite. It's one I, uh, I first grew up with. Same. I think it was also like the second game I ever owned. <laughs> so. <laughs> one person here is uh, on uh, 
Battle Network 5 hype. Did you prefer uh, Proto Man or Colonel? Because uh, when I get around to playing 5, I'm probably going Colonel just because I really like Colonel as a character. Wow, okay, I'm having really bad luck with these. Ooh. I should just Hard run for it. Is it. I do like Gyro Man, which is in Proto Man specifically, but Colonel is pretty good. I am a Colonel believer. <laughs> All I can remember is from the DS version, Lan Hikari. Yeah. <laughs> when I heard that, that killed me. <laughs> Oh no, there are people who are mentioning Battle Network 4. You're actually the first one I noticed. Uh, there are folks who are uh, saying like 4 and 5 is tied for third place for them. One person mentions they like 3 and 4. There we go. I, I got through that mess. Time to fight the bosses. Nice. Yes, Colonel Iris, and there is a uh, there is a extra Navi that is based on another character uh, from Mega Man X4. Uh, and I won't spoil that last one, but Colonel and Iris are known characters in the main story of Six. Uh, but they are based on the uh, the same characters from X4, which is my favorite X game as well. Doesn't work. That's not no, Mega Man X5 Guns N' Roses. <laughs> uh, I think I particularly played that one growing up a lot. If you've never tried any of the games, uh, but have heard good Finally things about them, sword. well, there's a reason for that, and you should try them out, uh, especially with the Legacy Collection that's out. Makes the games a lot more accessible. Yeah, with the Legacy Collection releasing, we've gotten, like, a, a lot of new players that are interested in the series, as well as a lot of returning players. It's been uh, very nice to see Battle Network starting to feel alive again. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine, like, that's what I wanted, uh... That's why I wanted y'all to be involved in the show during May. Uh, maybe I can poke y'all for some Legacy Collection Battle Network 6 for the 17th. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, because there is, uh, some exclusive content that came with the... Well, not exclusive, but... Uh, there's some more content that comes with the Legacy Collection that was previously only available either through the e-reader or in Japan at special events, stuff like that. Uh, so there's a lot of really awesome uh, things that you can get. Uh, some really awesome, like, Navi chips. Like in Battle Network 1, there's a base chip that you can unlock. Uh, they were playing Battle Network 3 Blue. Oh, I will remind people uh, with the Archipelago the only available version to do this with is the blue version. There is no version for white, sadly. Keep that in, keep that in mind when you want to uh, randomize your game. It only works with the blue version. Yeah, when this comes out publicly, because right now it's a, um, a... This is a sneak preview of the not public release <laughs> of like what's currently in development. So it is, uh, it is only blue version. I'm going to go to Drillman's computer now. Sounds good. Let's see if I can fight Punk. <laughs> good luck with that. Oh, I hope. Oh, I'll just put a Rook in the folder, he'll be fine. All right, okay. The, this particular starting point of this tank comp really confuses me. I never remember where the little alpha bug issues are. Huh? I just got cornered. Hmm. It's, yeah, it's like, nope, that, uh, that was wrong. I had to go down. Darn it. 
That always confuses me. Dang it. Not having access to the DS exclusive stuff from BN5 is kind of a shame because they did do some pretty cool 3D models for uh, Kirtle, or Colonel, Proto Man, and uh, <laughs> Mega Man. Yeah, I said Kirtle. I can't believe it. <laughs> and uh, also, the voice acting was pretty nice, too. Led to some funny situations. I would not be surprised if we eventually see a Star Force collection. Uh, that would be pretty cool. I know last year when I was still doing the show Never Before Seen, uh, I had y'all on last May for uh, for one of the Star Force games. I want to say it was Star Force 2. Um, yeah, I believe so. And that was a lot of fun. And honestly, the games look like a lot of fun. So I really would like to get a legacy collection to be able to play those. Okay, I'm actually resetting here. Give me a second. Here, I'm good, bud. There we go. Did not want to go back all the way through that again. Not Myself and a friend nice of mine so were like basically begging for a Battle Network collection for a few years, like when we saw the X collection and then we saw the Zero collection. We were just like, can we please, please get Battle Network? And it yeah, finally happened. It's, it's been a long time coming. Oh, We've absolutely. All open. I'm really glad of all the stuff they gave us because we got a lot more than we really expected because we have full access to all the mod cards as well as... Mm -hmm. Uh, full access to just all the old event chips, uh, a bunch of new artwork that we haven't seen before as well. Yeah. That weren't in like any collections. Uh, Kilios has the uh, heat shadow cross or uh, style change. Yes. I have a lot custom right now. Heat it's shadow is a blue exclusive. Custom. So to answer the question of what is going on, they're doing a multi-world right now. Kilios has finished, uh, but is just doing post-game fights uh, just to show off more of the game. Uh, Kirby is currently trying to gun for the end of the game. He is in what we call go mode, where he has all of the required items. It's just a matter of getting through all of the end game uh, computers so that you can actually get to the final boss. Once he beats Alpha, all of the items in his game that he did not pick up will release to uh, Karna's game. Karna is currently stuck in what we call BK or Burger King mode, basically uh, unable to progress in a meaningful way without an item that's stuck in Kirby's world. And this is what a uh, multi-world is like, where uh, items from one game may be present in another player's game and you need your fellow players to find their items that you need in their world so that you can complete your own world. And what you're looking at right now is Battle Network 3 uh, uh, multi-world right now. It's, it's not quite out uh, yet for the Archipelago uh, multi-world system. Uh, but it is uh, on its way, and this is uh, the current state of it right now, which is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's funny is that uh, typically if you do play or start getting into more multi-worlds, this is this situation right <laughs> here is actually likely to happen. <laughs> happens more often than you think. You'll have one person that'll probably finish early, one person in BK mode like myself, and one person trying to rush the finish to release items for the BK mode person. <laughs> and yeah, for uh, someone saying, I'm not sure if I get how the multi-world thing, uh, multi thing works. Basically, what happens with multi-worlds is you take all of the games, you randomize them if you're familiar with a regular randomizer, where, you know, all of your progression items are not where they're normally supposed to be. Uh, you take that and you take some of your own progression items, rip them out of your game, and throw them in someone else's. 
straw man and down. They're found somewhere nice. else. Oh, neat. Kirby is approaching the alpha fight, which is the final boss. And you'll see once uh, Kirby beats uh, base, and then I think alpha shortly after, uh, all of the items that he did not pick up in his game, in his instance of the game, uh, will release to, because he'll have completed his goal of beating the game. And in, when they release, uh, all of the things that were supposed to go be for uh, Karna We'll go to Karna's game, and that should include, uh, what is it, your PT, uh, PET case that you're missing? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And the neat thing is, um, in the future, you'll be able to see Battle Network 3 playing alongside other games that aren't Battle Network 3 with our, through the use of Archipelago, because Archipelago is a multi-game, multi-world randomizer, which is really neat. And you'll get to see an example of two games that aren't the same doing a multi-world together tomorrow on the first step, which starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Keyzeron and J-Hobbs are actually doing a crossover randomizer between Kingdom Hearts 2 and Pokemon Red. So uh, various oh. items that uh, Keyzeron will pick up like gym badges may not actually be gym badges, but something like um, one of the form changes for J-Hobbs' Sora in, uh, in Kingdom Hearts 2 and so on and so forth. And I got shake glitch. Yo! Nice. <laughs> GG. And that is Kirby's game completed. So in a moment, right. uh, we'll see the PET case come in. There's that wall of text. <laughs> so now, uh, Karna is now able to go start to uh, finish the game, if you will. It. So someone's asking with a single. Uh, Sorry, go it ahead. looks like according to the tracker, it looks like a uh, Karna got it. I saw the PET case uh, light light up. Nice. Uh, someone's asking with single world randomizers, some seed have awful play uh, placements. Are awful placements more likely when you go multi world? Uh. <laughs> Sometimes. For example, like Helios was in go mode, what we call go mode, like really, really early. Uh, it was just a matter of he wanted to get a better uh, chip folder to make the chances of him actually being able to beat the final boss a lot easier or a lot better. Uh, whereas like, uh, so like he took a little bit of time to just kind of like grind things out before uh, heading to finish the game. And I've had all this time now to make my ultimate folder. I think I'll be pretty <laughs> set. <laughs> exactly. You got in late, so is this run? This run is cooperative. Um, other people's stuff gets passed around to one another. So basically, uh, Kirby was holding the PET case for Karna uh, and so on and so forth. So in Archipelago, 
Uh, they didn't, the runners didn't utilize this at all, but in Archipelago, you can actually use a hint system where if you find X percent of your checks, uh, total checks in the game, you can then hint for a certain item and it'll tell you where one of the items that you hint for like, if I'm playing Pokemon and I want to know where my bicycle or my boulder badge is, and I've found at least 10% of my checks uh, in my game, I can do the hint command uh, in the server that's running the multi-world, and it'll say, uh, you know, your boulder badge is in insert place in your own game or insert place in, you know, someone else's game. That way you can just be like, hey, so-and-so, can you prioritize this when you get a chance? Because otherwise I can't progress. That sort of thing. Uh, does this mean the items are mainly what lets the game progress? Uh, yes. So if you don't have the items that you need to be able to progress, uh, meaningfully in the game like for example the pet case allows you to get access to the final areas of the game but you can actually go beat the game that kind of barricades you from progressing so if your pet case is not found early in someone else's game or is not found in your own game uh, you might be waiting like uh you just saw karna get out of waiting uh for a while yes archipelago has a progression balancing setting that you can turn on that tries to force important items to be earlier. Um, I'm not sure if the runners use that here. Uh, do you know what your settings were going into this? We set it to 50, so yes. it was default. Yeah, that's the fi that's the default. So like, you can set it so that like your stuff is found earlier. Um, it just so happened that Kelios's items were found early, which was lucky uh, under default settings. But obviously. Uh, Karna had to wait uh, for his PET case. Sometimes you just can't yeah. be helped. <laughs> what did... really held us back was the PET case, because that's the only way we can get to the final areas. Exactly. I will mention there are a couple of settings with this that we did enable, and... <clears throat> One of those settings was extra undernet ranks. The other setting was disabling the job BBS board. Yeah. Which was a side quest system. Yeah, so like, if you enable those, that gives you additional checks in the game. Like, the nice thing with Archipelago randomizers is that very often they have a lot of flexible settings that let you have as many or as few checks as you want. Uh, because these randomizers don't have to be done in one sitting like what you're seeing here tonight. They can be done asynchronously. So that means that, like, you know, you can have two players playing four games each if you really wanted to go really, really ham on it. And, you know, like, I have a group of, like, four or five players right now playing a bunch of games. I have two games in the randomizer. I have Sonic Adventure 2 and Stardew Valley. And, uh... People have a bunch of other games, like we have a couple of Link's Awakening players, we have a Zelda 1 player, Overcooked 2, Minecraft, and Pokemon are the other games, I think, in the pool. And uh, we've been poking at that for like the last three or four days, with like a total of 2,200-ish checks across all of the games total. Uh, someone is asking, is custom widely agreed as the strongest type in randomizers? Uh, custom is very, very helpful because you have access to like just more draw potential on your folder. But realistically, any of the styles are very competitively viable to get. There are some better than others, but uh, I think every single one is able to work pretty well in a randomizer setting. Honestly, bug style is as chaotic as it is can end up being the strongest style you just gotta get lucky with it i That's like more rng in my randomizers <laughs> <laughs> yes i do actually <laughs> like go full chaos mode uh, i have Very one friend much. who whenever uh she gets involved in our uh, like group multi-worlds that are like done asynchronously uh, she likes to put in like three or four games uh, with like 
max oh, randomizing know. settings and it's just absurd and it's like it's just like what are you doing to yourself <laughs> that's the fun of it all oh How yeah chaotic things can actually be Like, someone was, like, looking at my total number of checks and how I have, like, 200-ish in Stardew Valley and, like, 500 in Sonic Adventure 2, and they're like, do you hate yourself or something? <laughs> because I have, like, 700 <laughs> checks out of the 2,200. Okay, I remembered the code for uh, humor. Should I do the joke? Every time. Hey, Mega Man, could you help me with a geometry problem? Sure, Lynn, what's the problem? What do you get when you divide the circumference of a jack-o'-lantern by its diameter? That's easy, pumpkin pie. God. Okay, but if I get points <laughs> off, it's your fault. <laughs> uh, I that one in, that was a good... <laughs> it's such a great program. That's the stuff we need in these runs. I'm gonna go check what I can buy at the order, sis. Can I buy something silly for 59,000? No, apparently not. I can't buy gigas, unfortunately. Oh, wow, I could actually buy Darkman. <laughs> V4, specifically. That's funny. Holy buckets. Why didn't we think of this? I'm gonna do mm. that right now. What else can I buy? Oh, I yeah, that, this is a better play, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need these, but they would have helped me. Uh, this is a co-op type run. Right now, two out of three of our runners are done. They're just kind of doing other content just to show off more in the game. Uh, Karna is the screen to watch if you're looking for progression. Uh, Karna is the last screen that we're waiting to finish the game. And uh, uh, he's very, very close to the end. Uh, I think he's going into the base and then alpha fights. So we are oh actually God. almost done uh, with this run. So... Uh, Kilios finished first uh, and released a bunch of items over to Kirby while Kirby was trying to finish uh, his screen so that once he uh, finished uh, the PET case that was holding Karna back from the final areas was finally released back to Karna's game <laughs> to be able to finish the game. <laughs> So uh, we're all just, uh, they're all not where, but I'm not playing, but the three of them have been cooperating to get each other's items so that they could actually progress throughout the game. Uh, so like, for example, someone could find, uh, like someone else found Kilios's PET case, I think. Yeah. I think that was me. Yeah, that was me. I, I found <laughs> it somewhere in Zuko. Oh, yeah. Oh, he had all of her. Yeah, everybody's. <laughs> Oh, jeez. He was the gatekeeper that we were missing. <laughs> Oops. Also, uh, we are coming up close to time on the uh, run as a whole uh, with Karna entering the alpha fight. So when the alpha fight uh, finishes, I think when it fades to white, that should be time. Okay. I'm going to the right location. No, out. I am not. I am trying to find the bug frag shop. Oh, you win. <laughs> Dang. Yep, Dang. That's alpha. Yep. Shake glitch is a G very good tool. Yeah, I was going to say that was fast. That was G extremely G fast. And that is time on everyone. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh... And someone's saying, wait, a randomizer finishing over an hour early on GDQ? They actually gave me a two-hour estimate for one of the players to finish. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this was like a 155.21 for all three of you to finish, which is pretty incredible. I gave three hours for the other two players to be able to wrap up. But here we are. This was actually incredibly fast and very generous for the seeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we got I, very I, lucky. We got very lucky. 
Yeah, this is actually unprecedented on my shows because every time uh, when I was still running Never Before Seen, uh, my randomizers that I would have on the show had a habit of finishing overestimate <laughs> by a fair bit, and it was just a joke curse at that point. <laughs> uh, y'all should go check out the Soul Blazer uh, episodes from Never Before Seen, as well as the uh, Zelda One Metroid One crossover rando that I did for the series finale for that uh, for that show. Uh, after two years of hosting it, and that is, uh, you'll you'll see what I mean. Those are very fun episodes because they went off the rails. <laughs> but seriously, thank you, uh, thank you all, thank uh, thank you all three of you uh, for yep. <laughs> being here on the show. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure being able to show this off and uh, introduce people to the world of Archipelago. Um. Uh, do y'all have any shout outs before we uh, we start wrapping things up? I have one. Um, shout outs to the creator of this AP world, Digiholic, for the effort he's put into it so far. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and thank you, Digiholic, uh, for giving me permission to have this uh, shown while it's still in development. It was really exciting. I think Kilios. Uh, uh, gave me the idea because we were looking for something to run for tonight and uh, we're also looking at possibly doing some Battle Network 6 on the 17th to celebrate the Legacy Collection release as well as it being Mega May uh, and Keely was just like well this is in development uh, let me see if I can if we can show it off and uh, we got the okay which was really awesome so thank you um, uh, Digiholic for, uh, for letting us do this yeah, I was really glad that we were able to get the OK and they were very excited and they wanted to be here tonight, but they had somewhere to be. They were heading off on vacation. I hope they enjoy their vacation. Same. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, for shout outs. Yeah, uh, I'd say uh, shout out to Team BN. Uh, we, I've been a part of for a very long time and uh, we are very focused on the Battle Network games. Uh, casually and for speedruns. Uh, I don't know how much more fun it would be uh, if I had not started speedrunning back in the day and met most of these guys. So I'm glad that we were given the opportunity to show these games off as well, and I hope other people are able to try it. Alright. Um, I think you was very much mentioned everything I wanted to say as well. Uh, if you are looking for any speedrunning tips, or notes or looking to get into speedrunning, yes, go ahead and check out Team BN. Um, if you're looking for more PvP oriented stuff specifically, you will like to check out the N1 GP, which focuses entirely on Mega Man Battle Network PvP. Um, other than that, I want to just say thank you for having us on. And I've only been part of the Team BN community for about a couple months now, so it was an honor to be asked to be on here tonight with on the veteran speedrunners and the veteran community members. And also make right, sure yes. that you follow all three of them on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash xkilios, Twitch.tv slash karnaexe, and Twitch.tv slash xkirby2. Uh, don't know how regularly each of you stream. I know Kilios' stream uh, streams uh, often enough. You're also a VTuber yeah. like I am, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was I able to not. set it up for now, but uh, I wanted to... Uh, do it, but I thought it was fine to just show off uh, more of the randomizer stuff first. I'm gonna be honest, I don't stream basically at all, but I appreciate the shout out. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I kind of set myself a personal challenge to kind of try to stream every day, but I typically either do speedruns or I'm just casually playing JRPGs. That's about it, though. Definitely check out that. I, if you like RPGs, that is a good place to be then. So I just want to thank you all for being on the show again. And uh, y'all should look forward to this weekend, uh, May 6th through 7th. If you want to hear more from me, we're having Sonic and the Parallel Worlds, which is a week, weekend long uh, Sonic event. Uh, it, we do it every year where we do a you know different theme. This year's theme is Sonic fan games, mods, and more, which will start at noon each day. Use the exclamation point Sonic command in Twitch chat uh, if you want to learn more about that. 
uh, and you'll be able to see the schedule. It's stacked. Me and Hypnotics are hosting. We're very excited to be doing this again. Um, and uh, tomorrow we have, uh, if you want more Archipelago uh, exposure, we've got uh, a Kingdom Hearts 2 and um, Pokemon Red crossover multi-world with J. Hobbs and Kizaron on the first step starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. And then following that up is Think Fast, our trivia show uh, with a twist. And you can check that out because there are some Sonic Runners featuring on that. Uh, so if you like Horticulture and Sonic, check out uh, uh, check out Think Fast for uh, tomorrow as well. Until then, though, please look after yourselves and your loved ones. Drink some water, stretch your legs, eat a snack, take your me uh, medicine and your vitamins if you need to, and remember that you are valid and deserve all the best. And I want y'all to send all of this wonderful positive energy over to our raid target for the night and have a great rest of your evening. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>